Welcome to the all new Sports Visions on Bounce TV and to our worldwide web viewers on www.sportsvisionsusa.com. Hello, everybody. I'm DJ Jones alongside my good friend and traveling partner, Dale Williams. How are you, sir? What's up, player? You know I'm doing fantastic. Our first time back in Athens in, uh, since last year. And, of course, it's, yeah, we have an opportunity to come up and just a little bit and talk a little bit about Pro Day and the construction that's going on right here. Lots going on right here on this campus and uh, from construction to just making transitions, DJ. Also, the dogs are going to be playing, of course, invited to the NIT. Didn't have the season that Coach Fox wanted them to have, but, however, uh, you know, they scared a lot of people this year. They did it. They did their thing, and really it's still some kind of concession to go to the NIT. So they're still getting better. And March Madness is on and popping. And all that and more coming up next on Sports Vision. Selection now. Saving now. Value now. Columbus is Nissan Town. And the Nissan Now sales event is on now. Now, save $5,000 on a new Ultima. That's right. Now, drive a new Ultima. An IIHS top safety pick with $5,000 in savings. The best time to buy is right now. Nissan Now sales event. Don't miss it. We'll see you soon. Headquarter Nissan. Welcome back to Sports Visions. It's Pro Day in Athens, and obviously this is an opportunity and a part of the process to give these uh, pro professional prospects, if you will, a chance to come in and show their worth in front of all the scouts. Another job interview for some players, DJ, and really most of them are senior players that didn't have an opportunity to uh, do the combine, but you know, you got Leonard Floyd, you got Jordan Jenkins, you got these guys that had an opportunity to do the combine, but at the same time, great people to be around and be scouted by Bill Belichick, Rex Ryan, Rob Ryan. I mean, hey, interview. It's, it's the who's who's list here, and of course, there's a lot of uh, good defensive linemen, obviously, that's at a premium in the NFL, too. So, Georgia having an opportunity to have you know several offensive linemen, Leonard Floyd topping the list, probably is going to be uh, at the top of everybody's list as far as the University of Georgia is concerned. But there's a lot of other good prospects in, in you know in this group of players, and you know what, getting a good look. Malcolm Mitchell is a guy that you know a lot of people had forgotten about, but he is a very talented young man, went through some injuries. Uh, throughout his career here in Georgia, but he stayed healthy this past season, and there's still some uh, folks that really, really like his abilities. They really like his ability, DJ, and he's, one thing about Malcolm Mitchell, he's always been a playmaker, whether he's on the other side of the ball or the offensive side. He made plays. Really, he plays bigger and faster than what he really is, DJ, and I, I think he's going to get a shot, player. Another player that falls in that same category, but a little different, running back Keith Marshall. Came in with Todd Gurley several years ago, uh, two of the top running backs in the nation. Unfortunately for Keith Marshall, he went down with several injuries, but uh, he came in with that blazing speed. But all the folks now remember him from the combine just a few weeks ago, you know, running sub 4-3, of course, winning uh, the contract with Adidas, $50,000 for running <laughs> the fastest time in the combine. So everybody's all of a sudden now, you know, they're, like, they're, they're, they're shaking their heads, wanting to know, okay, we, we better reevaluate this guy because, uh, you know, they don't, they don't run that fast all the time. You know, really, I think the only question mark is, is DJ uh, about the ACL? Did his knee recuperate? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it recuperated, but at the same time, and we talk about this all. Uh, yeah, he has track speed, straightaway speed, but does he has that wiggle? Can he get? Has he become a, a you know has a lot of agility? Is what I'm trying to say. But the biggest thing is that the wiggle piece. We know he can run, DJ, but at the same time, he's gonna have to be able to be a whole lot more evasive. And as a running back, and you know as well as I do, at the next level, it's all about sticking that foot in the ground and getting upfield. And again, you know, having agility. It's called flexibility as well. You know, and again, I think Keith has to do a good job during this. Uh, you know, off season, showing these guys that he can change direction, that he can stop and put that foot in the ground and, 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 and you know, and turn it upfield. Because again, there's no doubt about it. He, you know, he's a world class speed guy. Well, no and, doubt. Uh, but one thing about it, we've seen many of those guys yeah. not make it at the next level because you don't have that wiggle. Well, you know, really, and, and the feet, the wiggle, the feet, you gotta have. But well, the feet that. come with the wiggle. Yeah. I mean, you can't yeah, do yeah, the wiggle without got, the feet. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta have all that. But at the same time. I think he's going to get an opportunity to go to a good team, a competitive team that can use him in spots. He might be a good special team player. He might be a good second down back or third down specialist because he's very athletic and, and speed kills. No doubt about that. But another uh, a football player here that's uh, got to take a good look at, John Theus has played a lot of football in his four-year career here at the University of Georgia. And, of course, uh, you know, it seemed like only yesterday that he came in into uh, on this campus, but he is getting evaluated. I don't think that uh, 
hit the combine did him well, but this pro day obviously can, can uh, resurrect him. It, it can resurrect him, DJ, but at the same time, you know, for as him being the height, the weight piece, I think he needs a little bit more girth when he's working out. And I think foot speed, hand speed, he's had a lot of, and played a lot of downs here at Georgia, but at the same time, I think he's got to get a little bigger player. No doubt. And Jordan Jenkins, uh, he came in, of course, he, we know him from Harris County, of course, uh, down in our neck of the woods in the Chattahoochee Valley. Uh, however, Jordan uh, had some injuries here in his senior year, but on paper, he has everything you need. Of course, and as far as far as uh, football IQ, he's a guy that is very intelligent. I think the, the scouts are really, really liking him. They just want to make sure that uh, he can do all the things they need him to do for his position. I think really, and, and the other thing about that, DJ, I think he's a wild card. You don't know whether you're going to put him down on all fours or you're going to stand him up and let him rush, be an outside linebacker and rush to end. But I think one of the biggest things, but he has the quickness. He has the arm strength. He's made plays here at Georgia. Good on and off the field guy. I think he's going to get a nice spot to go to a good team also. Well, you know, one thing that I do notice about this this combine in particular, and I know that the scouts have probably have uh, complained just as much as the media, is that because there is so much construction going on because of the new indoor facility that's going up, and when we come back uh, after this break, we're going to talk to you about the f indoor facility and show you what we're talking about as far as the limitations of this uh, pro day. Oh, that's going to be an interesting conversation, player. All right, we'll be right back after this. Sports Vision is sponsored by Aflac, Crown Royal, Express Motors, Diverse Powers. Truth be truth. The will to win will win. So intimidate your darkest fears. Revive every forgotten fantasy. Set goals you can never reach, then reach them. Count cards to fight fates that deck. And if you want to win as much as you want to live, you're ready to reign on. Someone's sandbagging. I'd be tired too. He paid my claim in one day when I got hurt. One day? Serious hustle. Serious duck. In just one day, we process a proven pay. One day pay, only from Aflac. Columbus is Nissan Town, and that's why we're giving you $2,000 in savings during the Nissan Now sales event at Headquarter Nissan. Now, save $2,000 on a new Frontier. Plus, we've got the all-new, all-powerful Titan in stock. That's right, a new Frontier with $2,000 in savings. And come test drive the all-new Titan today. It's here, the all-new Cummings Titan Diesel. Come drive one today at Headquarter Nissan. Glenn Ford, Chairman and CEO of I Dare You Academy, the number one high school training group in the South. There's no one bigger than us. We're going to be in Columbus, Georgia, March 26th at Memorial Stadium. Again, March 26th at Memorial, at Memorial Stadium from 11 o'clock to 1. Again, Memorial Stadium from 11 to 1. For more information, call the one and only Sean Riley at 706-617-1544. Come out, it's gonna be a free day. We're gonna get at it. You know, again, the number one high school training group in the South. I'm coming home, Columbus. I hope to see you there. And welcome back to Sports Visions. We're on the beautiful campus of the University of Georgia, of course, uh, right off of the Bessemer Athletic Complex. And Dale, I know when we were pulling into town, you know, we were reflecting back. You know, it's only been since this past fall that we were here in Athens, and it already, looking around campus, it seems like they're throwing up new buildings every other day. I mean, really, man, this place is growing leaps and bounds, you know, and of course, uh, athletic uh, facilities are concerned, parking decks. I mean, you name it, this place is just growing up, player. Absolutely, and again, with all due respect, the University of Georgia is putting in, finally, an indoor facility, something that has been uh, on the plates of the athletic board for, for quite some time. Again, everybody in the country, especially SEC, they use it uh, as a, like a competitive advantage for recruiting. And again, so it just makes sense when you have inclement weather and you have cold weather. I mean, you, to go inside to get a workout, when it's raining, you don't have to go out in the rain. You can, you can practice without the elements. And Georgia, believe it or not, is the last school in this conference 
to add that facility. Well, you know, man, we talked about this a lot, you know, for the last two years, why Georgia doesn't have one. And we kind of figured out, you know, why now? We know now uh, at the same time for the investment that it's going to take and, you know, where you're going to put it. You know, we've heard all kind of stories. Can't put it here, can't put it there. Now, all of a sudden, it's an emergency. It's a need. And really now with Kirby Smart coming in, I think it was a couple of things that he needs definitely needs it, you know, and they're going to need some more facilities, player. Well, it certainly didn't help by Kirby coming in uh, from the University of Alabama stressing the need, but the last regime uh, basically had asked for it for several years. However, I don't, I don't really think that the big boosters and donors uh, bought into it <laughs> to the point of what Kirby is bringing to the table. Again, they made the decision prior to Kirby coming on, but that, if you remember, uh, Jeremy Pruitt, the former um, uh, defensive coordinator for the uh, Georgia Bulldogs, who is now at University of Alabama, who spent some time at the University of Alabama, you know, he made a statement, and I think he made it, as the old folks would say, spoke out of church <laughs> on this prop, on this particular project, and it seemed like he got the ball rolling. He got the ball rolling, but it, it's definitely a need, you know, when, like you said, the Jeremy Pruitt piece, players, coaches from other players, uh, places, knowing that they need these facilities. You got to have these facilities, DJ, to compete, and it's a good thing that Kirby is here now getting him what he needs, that's going to be big. You know, being able to practice indoor and outdoor. You probably lost a few uh, scouts because a lot of time, you know, I think they had a workout with all their top-notch five-star players, and it rained that day, and they had to work out in the rain. That doesn't fail good, especially when everybody in the SEC has an indoor facilities and you don't. Well, one thing about it, don't get us twisted with this with statement. Yes, primarily it would be for football, but a facility like this is, is useful for all sports. You know, you've got a baseball team here that's, uh, that's a, one of the top teams in the SEC. Of course, you've got soccer teams. You've got all kinds of softball teams that can use this facility. Uh, you got to also have a uh, track uh, indoor track lanes in there so the track team can use it so you know it, it'll be a, a it won't be just a facility for football only and of course I'm sure that the athletic association can justify that they can justify it and really you know the money everything the revenue is going up you got to like again I keep saying new transitional coaches that been places know what's needed know how to do things I think that's very important I don't think the money was that big of a deal but I think really investment is the key word when Rick was here. Uh, I don't. I don't think they wanted to do that then. But now with Kirby's coming in, I think they want to get this guy everything he needs to succeed. Thirty million dollars is the price tag that uh, we heard initially. I'm sure it probably is going to run a little bit more than that. And just actually looking out over the construction site, as you you see some of the some of the pictures now. Dale, we remember those as being our grass practice fields. That's right. Uh, you know, again, now those fields are gone. I'm wondering how they're going to come back after they put the facility, indoor facility in, where they will place the grass fields. This turf that we're standing on is the only thing that <laughs> resembles what we were had when we were here because That's right. outside of the Coliseum, this grass field or this turf field was the only thing that was uh, back with us back in the 80s. It's going to be very interesting to see how this whole whole facility looks. I mean, for the indoor facility, yeah, I can kind of picture that. But the grass field, you still got to have some grass field. Yeah, you got the turf field now. But at the same time, you got, you're going to have a lot of space around here, DJ, to add some more stuff. And just so you know, right now, while all the construction is going on, uh, the teams are being uh, bussed over to the intramural fields uh, we'll just say that for the, for the sake of the, of, of the, it's probably about a mile and a half away from here, which is a little bit of an inconvenience, but at the same time, if you're really wanting to upgrade your facilities, uh, it's an inconvenience that you got to have. you got to have an inconvenience, but really, don't, don't, don't really think that uh, the intramural field is a downgrade. they got some pretty good fields around here, DJ. Absolutely. <laughs> you, and your kid, intramural fields in a lot of people's minds are just as good as some stadiums uh, as far right. as the turf and the upkeep. That's right, because you know, now you can get turf by the by the loads. I mean, all you got to do is say, okay, we, we're going to put a, a field down next week, and hey, they can have the load of grass in here immediately. So technology is big, but really, they have not taken any a you know, slight at all by practicing on the intramural field. All right, coming up in just a little bit, we'll have a little bit more to talk about the Georgia Bulldog program. We'll take you inside, of course, spring football practice, which just happened a little earlier in the week. They just started. All that and more coming up next on Sports Visions. Hi, I'm Philip Davitt with ENS Men's Clothing Warehouse. We'd like to say thank you, Columbus and the Bay City area, for 20 great years on Macon Road in the heart of Columbus. We're inviting you out to our 20th anniversary sale with bigger savings and deals than ever before. To help show our appreciation, ENS is offering complete suit and tux packages only $99. Jackets, pants, shirts, and ties, a $199 value for just $99. 
Find us on Facebook for details on how to win a Suter Tux package. Come celebrate our 20th anniversary, ENS, where you get more for a whole lot less. Truth be truth. The will to win will win. So intimidate your darkest fear. Revive every forgotten fantasy. Set goals you can never reach, then reach them. Count cards to fight fate stack deck. And if you want to win as much as you want to live, you're ready to reign on. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, come see us at Express Motors, 1210 14th Street, Phoenix City, Alabama. Or give us a call, 334-384-9101. With hundreds of vehicles to choose from. In-house financing, the right vehicle at the right price for you. We don't want all your business, just yours. Come see us, 1210 14th Street, Phoenix City, Alabama. Or go online, www.expressmotorspc.com. Departure, arrival, search, post, chat, check in. New foods, new fun, new favorites. All right, new clients. Don't stop there. Explore, discover, connect, grow, celebrate, work, live, play. At Hilton Garden Inn, we know you'll love our cook-to-order breakfast, first-rate amenities, and award-winning service. So count on us to give you all the ways to make the most of every stay. Hilton Garden Inn. It's better at the garden. Welcome back to Sports Vision. Spring football practice is kicked off, and of course, the University of Georgia kicked their spring practice off just a few days earlier. And uh, you know, Dale, we there's a lot of speculations. There's a lot of talk. Again, we talk about the new coach, and everybody's excited about the fact that we have Kirby Smart coming in. Of course, working with the great Nick Saban and bringing in a new culture of football. And you know, he's made no bones about it. He wants to make this a tougher football team. He wants to make this a bigger, stronger, faster football team. And uh, there's a lot of storylines from. Who's going to be the quarterback? You know, who's going to be the, uh, you know, the, the secondary? Who's going to, I mean, there's a lot of questions around here. But one thing that I do like what Co Coach Smart said and his coaches, all those players, even though they've evaluated the players that are here on film, all of those guys have a clean slate. The spring practice starts now. And that's, you know, that's one good thing. Like everybody has a clean slate because, again, they've, I'm sure Kirby has watched film of all these guys. But at the same time, everybody has a clean slate going to get an opportunity to play and just got and then the way you play on film sometimes doesn't really translate how you practice so that's going to be very interesting at the same time uh, the quarterback story you know Lambert is he going to be the quarterback I mean Bryce Ramsey who's Easton it's going to that's a big question mark and how physical and how tough that Kirby can get these guys to play. That's going to be big, man. Well, again, you know, as I mentioned, I want to make a correction. The, the, the you know, the, the the practice or the process started during the winter workouts, and they got that behind them themselves. So coaches have a good idea who worked hard in the weight room, who gave maximum effort, who pushed themselves to the limit. So that's the first part of the process. Now, of course, that needs to translate into the onto the football field. It got to translate onto the football field because again, the character things of winter workout. You know, who's going, who's going the extra mile. Who gets up here early at morning? Who gets to practice there? All those character issues, they've kind of addressed those issues now. But the toughness piece, the you know, the strength, the conditioning, the passion, the intensity, those things got to be upgraded to Kirby Smart standards. And you and I both know that again, you can lift all the weights and that's great. You can run and all the miles, that's great. All the lead to sprints, but of course, until you put those shoulder pads and that helmet on and you go out and play right. the game, that's when you find out, you know, who can play and who can. That's that's what you're gonna find out in the spring and you know when they put pads on, I'm sure Kirby's gonna look for his headhunters, his physical guys, his tough guys, his guys that are gonna lead his team in the battle. That's gonna be very interesting to see because again, you know, it's it's a lot of people that started last year, they probably not gonna start, DJ. And that's one thing when you when you when you got a new coach coming in and a new regime coming in. Everybody gets an opportunity to play. And speaking of those uh, those new coaches and the new regime, don't take it for granted that that's a, that's a, a easy transition. You know, again, you're talking about changing the culture. You got a whole new philosophy, a whole new way of doing things here, and these players have to adapt. And the, the ones that can adapt the quickest are what probably be, will, be the, will be the ones that are the most successful. That's right. And just because you started last year doesn't mean you're gonna start this year. Because again, the slate is clean. Everything is a, you got to start over. 
everybody's got the same kind of opportunity to play. But one of the things, it's going to be a criteria. You're going to have to be tough. You're going to have to be physical, intense, and passionate to play for Kirby Smart. And that's going to be an improvement. And the other thing is, DJ, and we didn't talk about, the expectations are still the same. No doubt. Again, is that fair? You know, I don't know, but it's, it's the SEC. And you know what? This is the big time. This is a big league. And I know that Kirby and his staff just got here, and they got new coaches, and, of course, some players that have to get adjusted under, the, uh, under this new culture. But the Bulldog fans, <laughs> the Bulldog Nation, will still demand excellence. They want to see uh, right. the Bulldogs beat Florida. They want to see the Bulldogs beat Tennessee. They, wanna, they want them to beat all – I mean, they want them to beat everybody on the schedule. However, again, this is a transition year, but you know what? I don't think they're going to get a pass. They're not going to get a pass, and really, just to hear Kirby talk, Kirby expects good things out of these guys, too. He's come from a great program. He's bringing that program here. He wants to get Georgia back to where it needs to be, but at the same time, his, expect his expectations are very high, too. So, Dale, I'm going to ask you this point blank. With all of the uh, new building going on and, of course, a lot of the inconsistent ways, but I won't say inconsistent ways because the coaches, new coaches, this is the only way they know. But the players having to travel – uh, you know, a mile and a half to practice every day from spring mm -hmm. through the fall. Uh, of course, the new transition of coaches and everything. How do you really, realistically, what do you really expect the dogs to do? I, I think they're going to adjust. They're going to play well. They're going to compete. That's one thing I know that he, Kirby's going to be able to they got to compete and really just, again, we, as you said earlier, change the culture. That's one thing that's going to happen, and that's going to you're either going to be in this culture, or are you going to be out of this culture? And really, uh, no side effects. You know, everybody you know, trying to be all right with everybody. Kirby came to win. Absolutely. And again, competing right now over these next couple of weeks. Of course, G Day will be coming up on the 16th of April. Kirby Smart has made it plain <laughs> and simple. He wants you, you, to be one of the 93. Thousand fans that are coming in to support him at G Day. That's going to be big, and really, I think to get behind Kirby to let him know that you are with him and you, we have the same expectation. You should be here, ninety-three thousand for a G Day game. I mean, really, for those fans who don't have season tickets, who can't get to a Georgia game, that's going to be a great atmosphere and a great opportunity for you to bring your family up to see how Georgia does it. Nor the dog nation like we do and the curiosity and the, and the culture change and all of the changes going on. I think that those folks are going to be, a lot of folks going to come in Athens who hadn't been here before. That's going to be big. You know, really, you know, you got all, you got a free G-Day game, spring game. You got everything going on on campus. A great opportunity to bring your family, uh, kids that want to go to school at Georgia, kids have not had an opportunity, can't afford to come to a football game or see this great campus. That's going to be the time to do it. All right. Let's take a short break. This is Sports Vision. A smile is the most admirable thing you can wear. And for anyone age 1 to 101, Cook Dental Care has a smile for you. Dr. Kathy L. Cook offers a wide range of individualized, innovative services from basic preventative dentistry to specialized care. We provide comprehensive dental care for the entire family, including pediatric. Insurance, financing, walk-ins, and new patients are always welcome. So for your family's dental care, visit Cook Dental Care. Truth be truth, the will to win will win. So intimidate your darkest fear. Revive every forgotten fantasy. Set goals you can never reach, then reach them. Count cards the fight fates that deck. And if you want to win as much as you want to live, you're ready to reign on. Someone's sandbagging. I'd be tired too. He paid my claim in one day when I got hurt. One day? Serious hustle. Serious duck. In just one day, we process a proven pay. One day pay, only from Aflac. Scott Sawyer with Diverse Power. Diverse Power wants our customers to enjoy all the benefits that reliable, consistent electric service provides. Our BPI certified technicians offer duct blaster testing of your HVAC ductwork to locate leaks. We also offer a full blower door examination that will qualify homeowners and home builders to meet the new Energy Code building standards. 
At Diverse Power, we offer innovation through vision, quality through service. And welcome back to today's final segment of Sports Visions. And Dale, I tell you, it just feels good to be back home, if you will, or our old home, back in Athens. And again, mm -hmm. to see so much progress, you got to feel good about it. I mean, you see the progress going on around DJ, you see, you know, from the transitional pieces, all the new facilities, and really, this place is just getting bigger, man. It is getting bigger. And I know that uh, a lot of expectations, as I mentioned earlier, the Dog Nation just settle down, man. Uh -huh. Give us an opportunity or give the coaches an opportunity to put this thing together because I think they're on the right track and I think they're on to something big. I think they're on to something big also, DJ, you know, for us to, uh, a kid getting another opportunity to play in another system. Kirby's going to create his own system, DJ, on defense side of the football. But offensively, you don't know what they're going to do. But at the same time, you got talent. I want to say this, too, before we finish the show. Congratulations to Mark Fox and the Georgia Bulldogs. I tell you what, J.J. Frazier and the Dogs, they had uh, some, uh, an awesome season. I know we saw them uh, finish up strong in the SEC tournament. They almost, uh, of course, winning the first two games and getting to the semifinals. But uh, also getting an invite to the NIT. I mean, really, it's, it's been a good season. You know, I'm looking at it, and Mark is doing a great job, you know, of the time as being here. But, you know, to finish strong, that seemed to be their routine. They finish strong in the SEC. They either get a bid uh, to the SEC tournament, I mean, the NCAA tournament, or they get an NIT bid, and I think that's big just to show the progress of the basketball program. I think what a lot of people don't realize is how tough uh, the, the non-conference schedule was <laughs> that the Bulldogs played. And I know uh, they played Baylor and the likes of uh, several other teams that are just not cookie-cutter teams that normally, you know, you just want to mow over. And, again, that might, I think that might have hurt them somewhat in the selection process. But at the same time, if I was Mark, and I think I heard him say it, you know, if he had to do all over again, he would have to do it the same way because they lost several several of those games by less than six points. And, really, and then the other piece, DJ, is that, you know, Ford just get they're about a couple of players short, DJ. And just to keep them, some of these guys getting some of these uh, state basketball players of the year, getting some of those All-Americans to stay in the state, Couple of them, and I think really the program will be right back on track. March Madness is here, and I know right now it's too early to start talking about your bracket. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, have you filled you. it out yet? Oh, uh, before well, what? <laughs> yeah, I, get, I need a couple of mulligans, man, and then I'll fill one out. But uh, I've really been interested in Oklahoma, man. I like how Oklahoma plays. Well, you know, when you talk about it, you know, you got you got to look at you know Kentucky, and you got to look at yeah, Indiana. Yeah. I mean, there's some names out there. <laughs> Oregon is a, another team. I mean, there's some great ones playing in this in this tournament. However, it's way too early in the game for me. I don't know about you. I know a lot of you guys have fun with the brackets, but I usually don't get interested until I get down around the Sweet 16. Well, you know, we're going to find out real quick next week. You know, after everything is destroyed by Thursday, Saturday, you know, you got some wins. All those number one seeds will probably still be there. But you still cannot erase the fact that North Carolina, Duke, Michigan State, Connecticut, all these teams, it's going to be some historic values coming around there, and we know it's going to be some buzzer beaters. All right. Well, that's going to do it for all the time we have for today's show. For Dale Williams, I'm DJ Jones reminding you to keep your eye on the ball. Have a great week. Matthew 6 and 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you.